You're watching CCN, Clarksville Community Network, produced by Goodwin Productions. Powered by CDE Lightband. My whole life, I have done some kind of creative activity from one end of the spectrum to the other. That's just my personality. But about three years ago, I went to a watercolor class and absolutely loved it. And I've just been doing it ever since. I'm Nina Suggs and I'm a watercolor artist here in Clarksville, Tennessee. I was born in Jersey, but we moved back here when I was an infant, so I've always lived in Clarksville. Not born here, but raised here. <laughs> I paint typically Monday through Friday, without fail. So a lot of times I'll paint something because I love it, or I might paint something just because it's a challenge and I haven't tried it before. I mean, there's a whole slew of different reasons why I choose the subjects I choose. Some of the paintings that I have here, the Hershey's for example, I was in my studio one day and I actually had a bag of Hershey's and I was trying to think of, well, what do I want to paint today? What do I want to work on? And I just looked over and those were sitting there and I thought, oh, this would really be a cool subject. Because you've got the reflectiveness of the, the label and then you've got all that lettering and of course I had to eat one of the chocolates that was open, you know. <laughs> so and then the one with the bottle of wine and the silver pitcher. That one, I was actually entering into a contest and I wanted it to sort of have that old world look. So that's the reason why it's kind of black and dark and just kind of highlighting the fruit and the glass and a little bit of shininess in that pitcher. And I typically try to use the sun as lighting more than anything else. So a lot of times I'll just go outside with a little table and set things up. And depending on the time of the day, if it's early morning, midday, afternoon, evening, you get warm light, cool light, direct light. You get a lot of really neat shadows, especially if you're using glass or anything reflective. I really like painting things that are shiny and glass because of that, because you do have all of those different, like really super highlights if the sun is hitting it just so on a rim of a glass. And then on the back side of the glass where the sun is coming through, you might even get a little prism. You know, a lot of people that I have learned from, they say paint shapes especially like when I was talking about how much I love to paint glass, that is the perfect example of painting shapes. You know, you see that stack of cups and that you know that's what you're looking at, but it's almost like you have to break it down into bite-sized pieces. You have to look past the object that you know you're painting and just focus on a shape that you see really breaking it down will ultimately get you to the end goal of the object that you're painting. When I was a kid, I mean as far back as I can remember, I've always just loved doing something with my hands and taking things that you wouldn't necessarily put together and putting them together to make something else. So when I was young, like preteen, too young to drive, lived out in the boondocks, couldn't go anywhere. So 
Sabrina, my sister, and my brother were little and they had those little golden books, kind of like um, Disney, sort of, with the cartoon characters and whatnot. So I would get those and try to sketch them out. And so just one thing led to another and I've always, my whole life, just loved being creative. I love painting things that are small and that you really have to hone in on and pay attention to, well, does this have a sparkle here? Is there a slight shadow there? Is it a hard edge or a blended edge? I like to try to recreate something as close to realistic as possible. It's a challenge. I think that's one of the reasons why I like watercolor so much because it has the possibility of being a very difficult medium to use because sometimes it does have a mind of its own and you want it to zig and it zags instead. And that in itself is, can be a challenge. I've just always liked the realism style. And I've dabbled with some abstract and those are fun but they're just not my personal taste. But when I see a photo of whatever it is that I'm going to paint, I love trying to recreate that with my paint on that paper and make it look as real as possible. I love it when somebody looks at a painting and go, is that a photo or is that a painting? That just, it just gives me a sense of pride to go, I did it. I created this painting and they can't really tell if it's a painting. It makes me feel like I've accomplished what I set out to do. I like setting things up and trying to create the composition. That can be a struggle sometimes, and there has been plenty of times that I've chosen something I wanted to paint, and I've got it all set up, and then, you know, take 50, 100, 150 photos, moving things around, trying to get it with different shadows, different heights. There's plenty of times that I do that, and never end up painting any of those photos because they just didn't speak to me. It really has to just get you in your soul and go, that's it, that's perfect. So that's kind of the way that I work. I take what some might consider the cheater's way out because yes, I can hand draw what I've taken a photo of, but it would take me as long to do that as it would to paint the painting. So typically what I do is I print out the image, however big or small I want it. I just take a graphite pencil and color the back and lay that down on my watercolor paper and then I just trace around the object and that kind of thing and go from there. Some artists don't believe that's the way it should be done and that's fine, but just for me personally, it's a time saver. I don't have to worry about if the handle on that cup, if I'm making it shape just right, if I'm going over the actual image, I'm getting it just like it ought to be. So whenever I'm painting something like that that has a really straight edge or lettering in it, what I have learned to do, or at least is what works for me, is I may take some washi tape. And if I'm wanting to paint a really straight edge on the bottle, I might just put that washi tape straight down that line. And that way I don't have to worry about going over that line. There's just all different kinds of ways to accomplish those little bitty fine details. Watercolor is something that I don't know that I'll ever give up. I taught myself to knit 20 years ago and I knit almost every day too. You know, after dinner, watching TV, I can't just sit there, I gotta be doing something, so I'm knitting. I've never given that up and I love watercolor as much, if not more, than knitting. So 
I really don't see myself ever not doing it. And sure, if, if I sell some paintings in the meantime, that is a sense of accomplishment for me and it gives me a sense of gratitude that someone appreciates my work enough that they would want to purchase something that I've created. I do it because I love it, but along the way, if somebody likes my work and they want me to paint for them or buy something from me, that's just the cherry on top of the ice cream cone. For current and exclusive content, subscribe to CDE Lightband, connecting you at the speed of light.